Hello there everyone and... A goal, Albert Rusnak. That is phenomenal. Hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 30 in total of Hull City Career Mode here on FIFA 17. Today we are moving into the January transfer window, so we'll be playing a little less in terms of fixtures, although we've only actually got two scheduled fixtures in this month anyway, being Middlesbrough and Chelsea, so we'll be playing those two games unless we get a rescheduled match somewhere in between and we'll also be getting into some transfer activity, but as I mentioned really to be honest with you we don't really have too many players to bring in um, at this point we only have a few players to bring in we'll be listening to offers for certain players so you never know we might end up selling a player who we weren't initially wanting to sell for big money and then maybe having to replace them but at the moment I feel as if we only need to add about two players to the uh, to the squad roster being a centre-back to replace the, dec uh, the decreasing or declining Curtis Davies and also another youngster as well. So last episode I asked you guys for some suggestions in terms of players to buy and you guys did not disappoint. I asked for some centre-backs and also some youngsters from different positions as well in terms of depth players. Uh, the likes of Thomas Didion, uh, Brian Vehar and also Kasper Dolberg were suggested in that department. But in terms of centre-backs we've got a ridiculous amount of suggestions. Tin Yedvai here who's technically a right-back but can also play centre-back. Derek Luckerson, we've got Nicholas Stark here, Cesar Montez, Kenneth Omaruo, Kalido Kulubali, Virgil van Dijk, Davinson Sanchez and Timothy Kolodzjak as well as Karim Rekic here. Now some of these are a little bit more like realistic than others and I don't mean realistic in terms of oh my god they would never sign for Hull but in terms of our budget, our transfer budget really, um, some players are more affordable let's say than others but I do want to wait until all of these players are scouted before we start making any decisions on who we're actually going to sign. So now that it's time to identify Identify which position we might need a young depth style player and I've sort of assessed things a little bit and with the injury to Marvin Stefaniak at the moment and the relative decline of Robert Snodgrass I feel as if bringing in a winger might be a decent idea not necessarily a ridiculously good one maybe only like 72 or 73 overall but someone to provide some depth so we've taken a look then at a few wingers that we could potentially buy that come into that category that I, moment, uh, that I mentioned sorry a moment ago uh, we've got Gaia Zahid here of uh, Valarenga left winger he's 23 years of age though so I won't see much too, like, too much growth out of him. So maybe that's not an option. I don't know. He's not scouted yet either. Another Norwegian player. This is Rafik Zekanini as well. Who'd hopefully be around the overall I'm looking for. Kasper Dolberg, I do believe, can play as a winger as well. We might explore him because obviously he's a player who's doing very well in real life at the moment. We've got Dorian Rotario as well from Real Betis. Someone who featured in my Hidden Gems video, actually. Oliver Burke as well, who we could potentially look at too. Um, so I've got a few wingers. Oliver Burke probably is the one that I'm looking at the most because he's... Uh, from the UK as well. It would make a lot of uh, sense bringing him in from RB Leipzig to be fair. Quick bit of training then, the first bit of training in this episode and Albert Rusnak, the first player there on the left hand side, he's being trained along with Dave Fraser and a few others. Both him and Fraser were actually up for the award of player of the episode but Albert Rusnak won, which means he will play in every single game of today's episode. So we've got 10 million in terms of transfer budget and around about 60k in terms of wages, so in all honesty not too much. Right, we've got some replies then from respective clubs uh, given our inquiries for their players. RB Leipzig wants 6.5 mil for Oliver Burke. Real Betis only want 3.8 for Doran Rotariu. Valarenga asking for 6.5 for Gaius Zahid and Odds BK of the Norwegian League wanting £4.3 million for Rafik Zeknini. Now as much as I would love to bring in Oliver Burke, he is the most expensive out of the players here, for good reason I suppose as well. We are going to make a very, very like ridiculously cheeky offer of £3.5 million. We have an exact 
exactly got too much money in the bank, so we need to be very careful with what we're spending. We're going to offer a first offer of £2.3 million here for Dorian Rotaru, who plays for Real Betis. Uh, Valarenga wants £6.5 million for Gaia Zahid of Valarenga. He's got the lowest potential, but he has also got the lowest wages, so we are still going to make an offer for him. Again, be very cheeky, £3.5 million for him. And then finally, we'll make an offer now to Odds for Zechnini. We'll put in a £2.5 million bid for him. Again, don't think they'll accept it, but it's always good to test the water and see if we can get a bargain here. I've also got a message back from Ajax about Kasper Dolberg, but they want £8.5 million for the Danish youngster, so that is probably unlikely to happen unless we get a massive burst of money from something in uh, in the next few days. Now then, this is an interesting set of emails. Unsurprisingly, RB Leipzig did decide to reject our bid for Oliver Burke, saying they want more money, and Odds BK said the same thing about Rafik Zeknini. Interestingly, Real Betis decided that that £2.3 million bid only for Doran Rotaru, the Romanian winger, is enough. Um, we'll, we'll stall on this up for a moment, just so that we can weigh up and assess our options. We will make some new counter bids for the guys. We'll make a £4 million bid now for Oliver Burke of RB Leipzig, and we'll also make a £2.8 million bid for Zech Nini. So then out of nowhere, Genoa have made a £3.1 million bid for Rafik Zech Nini, which is more than we offered. We've also got a transfer offer here for Harry Maguire as well, which I assume will be a loan deal. Indeed it is. This should get the board and the player himself off our back for a little bit. Uh, Valarenga have decided to reject our bid here for Gaius Zahid. It's looking more and more as if it's going to be a straight two horse race now between Doran Rotaru and Oliver Burke for the player that we buy. Time though for the first game of today's episode. The injury for Marvin Stefaniak means that he will not feature in this side, but obviously Albert Rusnak was the player of the episode from last time, which means he has to play in every single game. So Vincent Cozielo continues to sit on the sidelines just for a little bit, whilst Albert Rusnak continues to stand in the limelight. Potentially we'll use Rusnak as a winger in the next game of today's episode and give Cozielo his, his place in the starting 11 back. So we're facing Middlesbrough then at the KC Stadium for this one and obviously Middlesbrough dealt us with a defeat when we played them in the reverse fixture this season in the Premier League. They were second in the league at the time. I don't know where they stand going into this game. They've since dropped to sixth in the league but they're only five points behind us in the league still. These will be by no means easy opponents. We know that already this season from the defeat last time. It's strength versus strength apparently in this game because um, Middlesbrough have the best defence in the league, whereas we have the best attack in the league, so we'll be hoping to break down that man there, Daniel Ayala, and the rest of his defence. Middlesbrough going forward here, very direct, like they were actually against us in the reverse fixture. Linus Valkvist clears only as far as Rhodes, though back to Middlesbrough player, good save from Cardinal. I think the shot coming in from Gaston Ramirez in the end. And now here's Rusnak, who scored that brace of beautiful goals last episode. Now it's Cyprian into Bailey's. Has he got any support in the middle? It's towards and Tep at the back post, but cleared away. Middlesbrough are doing a lot of a lot of pressing and what I like to call in Nigerian slang gara gara. So basically, they're doing a lot of, you know, pressing and all that, but then when they get the ball, they don't really do anything at all. Well, that's a good steal from a four eight. Now towards Rusnak. Good run from Hernandez, who can put the ball into the back of the net. No, he can't. Brilliant save from Victor Valdez. No, it's not Victor Valdez. It's Brad Guzan in between the middles. But sticks right on the edge of half time. Good pass through from Rusnak. And, I mean, Hernandez has... I, I rate the fact he's tried to put it through his legs, but it's straight at Guzan. There's no direction there at all. To Robertson, I was thinking of hitting a long shot, but Andrew Robertson isn't going to put one in from there, is he? As, oh, for Robertson! Robertson, what are you doing? He's literally just tackled Weil and Cyprian. Back towards Rusnak again. Got support from a Afori, who turns his man, goes for the shot. Good save from Guzan at his near post. Robertson is nowhere to be seen down this left-hand side at all. It's down to Valkvist to head it away. He does so, but Rhodes will get there. It's now to Victor Fischer. Goes for the shot, hits the post. It'll deflect back. Can we get it away? Yes, we can, just about. Ball towards the back post for Rhodes again. It was a very difficult header, actually. It was almost over his shoulder, but he goes wide in the end. That is the end of the game, though. Nothing really to report, to be quite honest with you. Not a great game of football. 
It is nil-nil, pretty cagey, not many chances. Man of the match goes to the right back, Linus Valkvist, but some good ratings for Rusnak, Afori, and Cyprian as well. Okay, so RB Leipzig have once again rejected our bid for Oliver Burke, saying they want more money. We can't offer too much more, obviously, because we've got to remember that we've got to sign a centre-back at some point during this transfer window as well. And Odds BK have rejected our offer for Zeknini because he's gone to Genoa. We're actually going to make that contract offer now for Rotaru of Real Betis. Right, time for a new bid. They wanted they wanted six and a half. Last bid we made was four mil. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, RB Leipzig accept that offer. RB Leipzig are really being a pain in my ass right now. 4.8 million pounds plus Sam Klukas is unacceptable according to them. 5.2 million pounds is the is is. I mean, I, the problem is I need to get I need to get a centre back as well. This is this is the issue here. I don't know I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what to do. RB Leipzig. I can understand why everyone hates them now. I mean, you know, it's fantastic. He said. 73 overall. Doran Rotaru is going to be at least 72, surely. Is it even worth that much? Is it even... We need to get a centre-back. And that is the most... That's the more important position, in my opinion. So we're going to bring in Doran Rotaru from Real Betis. 2.3 million pounds. 15k in wages. He's loyal. His team is loyal. And I'm sure he'll repay our faith. And hopefully he's a good signing. So here is the man himself. So we've got a decent deal here. At the end of the day, he is literally just a depth player to come in if anyone else gets injured. And I'm sure he'll still have more of an impact than Robert Snodgrass at this point. He's 72. Oliver Burke was 73. I don't feel as if that one overall difference is worth four odd million pounds. Time then now for the second and final game of today's episode. Away from home at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. So this should be a very difficult game. Not too many changes, although Audrey Barjo comes in at left back for Robertson, and Didi replaces Wylan Cyprien, and Kozielo is back in at number 10, which pushes Rusnak now out onto the wing. Also worth noting, our new Romanian signing, Doran Rotaru, is starting on the bench for this game. It's a pretty rainy, windy, and wet Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea for this game. Honestly, I'm still, I don't know whether you guys are as well, because it's not even really an important signing, it's only a depth signing, but I am actually gutted we didn't get Oliver Burke, because I feel as if that would have actually been a really, like, a really, actually quite realistic signing. We're going to focus, though, on this game. The player to watch is Thibaut Courtois. Now, I did actually read a little news info article bit on this game, on, on this career mode save, and apparently Thibaut Courtois wants to leave Chelsea at this point in the save. It's also kind of worth noting that this Chelsea squad is a lot stronger than the Chelsea squad we faced in the reverse fixture. Chelsea on the ball with Matic, that's through to Costa, good one too. Matic fires over the bar, though. It's into and Didi though now. Now to Cosiello goes for the first time strike. Straight into the hands though of Thibaut Courtois who can lump it long towards Costa but it's one in the air. Very well done actually by Son Just. Now it's John Obi Mikel. That's through to a Chelsea player just wide. But Eden Hazard with the shot. Probably would have expected him to put that on target although it was very close to the bottom corner. Oh, that's a good little ball from Azard into Matic, who's very attacking. Same as John Obi Mikel. Here's Costa. It's through to Mikel. Surely that was offside. I do believe it has ended up being given as offside. No, it's been given as a free kick to Chelsea. I don't quite understand where in that balance of play a, a foul to Chelsea was. I don't quite understand that, but that's fine. I'll watch on the replay. Azard takes it, but it's over the bar in the end. Great touch there from Alonso. Puts the ball into the box. Can we get it away? Cardinal punch is clear. It's cleared then away by Ofori. Cozielo's literally had one shot that was straight into the arms of, of Courtois. Apart from that, we've struggled. Here's Rusnak going for a shot and a good save from Courtois. Already a better chance in this second half. And we're only two minutes in to Ofori. Now to Cozielo. That's a shocker of a touch, but he goes for the strike anyway. Good save from Courtois. This is ridiculous. Look at the amount of players Chelsea have got back. Right, we're going a little bit all out here. And this is not, this genuinely is not because I'm going all out attack. Oh my god, we have to score. But I genuinely think we actually have a better chance of scoring and also holding on if we use this formation, the 4-2-4. We've still got two bodies in central midfield, but we've got some help for Hernandez. This is a very bold move. This is potentially the boldest move I've ever made, to be quite honest with you, but Dave Fraser and Dorin Rataru are coming on for Rusnak and Ndidi, and we're switching to a 4-2-4. Now to a 4 to Kozielo, run being made over the top towards Hernandez, can he get on the end of it? He can! 
Can he cut back? Because he's not really got much space. It's in towards Antep, who goes for the shot and almost finds the back of the net with the finesse. Probably should have scored, I won't lie, but it was a decent effort from the Frenchman anyway. Now to Willian, who can come through on goal. Good effort and just wide from the Brazilian. A long shot, a snapshot, but what an effort it was. How close was this? Oh my goodness me, it's grazing the post. I think, to be honest, Cardinal had that covered. Now it's to Cozielo, into a Fori. Now Dave Fraser, Rotari who's making the run, Rotario, oh it's through, it's to Hernandez and it's been put in the back of the net, Dorin Rotario almost scored on his debut but Hernandez is there to put the rebound in, in injury time, surely the last attempt of the game, the last kick of the game or the last header of the game technically from Hernandez to put it into an empty net, Rotario almost scored on his debut, that would have been an absolute dream in injury time. Gary Cahill at stamping on Hernandez. Don't know whether there'll be any retrospective action because that was very dangerous from the English centre-back. But the key factor is we take the lead right at the death. That could surely be the winner in this game. Hull City come out 1-0 winners at Stamford Bridge with a last-minute goal from Abel Hernandez. It took a full 180 minutes to see a goal in this episode, but it was well worth the wait. Man of the match, rather unsurprisingly, is the goal scorer and the game winner, Abel Hernandez, with an 8.6. But good shout out as well for Linus Valkvist getting an 8 rating too. Good ratings as well for Ndidi, Cozielo, and a good shout for Rotaru and Dave Fraser, who both came off the bench. Final inquiries now coming back for centre backs. Tinge Edvai is really out of our price range, I think, unfortunately, and so is Florentin Pogba, who was someone else, I think, suggested from Sonatiem, but they want 15.5 mil. If we had a bit more money he'd definitely be someone we'd go for because he's 80 overall but unfortunately he's a little bit too expensive and also word that Sam Klukas will be leaving on a pre-contract agreement to go to Blackburn um, so we won't be getting any cash for him I sort of knew that was going to happen anyway there, no team was ever going to buy him if his contract was expiring right so I've managed to slim down the list of centre backs down to five which means you guys can vote for which centre back you'd like me to buy in the top right of the screen so your choices are Derek Lukasen you can see his stats here on the screen of Azer Alkmaar, Nicholas Stark, you can just pause on the video if you want to see them in more detail of Hertha Berlin, Cesar Montes as well, or Cesar Montes from Monterrey, he looks very good and he's only 20 years of age as well, that's insane, Kenneth Omaruo, unfortunately I haven't got him down to a T but you can sort of get a grasp of how good he is at various things, he's from Chelsea, and Davinson Sanchez, similar situation, very strong though and pretty pacey too from Ajax, he's 21, the valuations are accurate as well, they're from Inquiry. So they're, they're the maximum I have to pay. The, the reality is it's probably going to be much lower for all of these guys. Here is how the episode has left the table though. And we can see that Man City are now top by two points. So we've relinquished the lead after that draw against fourth placed Middlesbrough. Who find themselves back in the Champions League spots. Now that it is time to look at the Hall of Fame. Vincent Cozielo not as far out as he was before in terms of appearances. Cardinal also only needs one more clean sheet as well to overtake David Marshall. So he and the Scotsman are level on clean sheets in total for the club now. Also, now is your opportunity to vote for today's player of the episode to two polls in this video. Uh, you can choose between four or five players that you thought played the best in this episode. And the winner of that poll, as you guys all know, will play in every single game of the next episode. That, though, is about it for today's episode of Hull City Career Mode. If you have enjoyed, then, of course, feel free to smash the likes button, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. It has been a pleasure though ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. I